you can start. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the, the organizer of this online seminar on control and information. My name is Maël Le Trust. I am working at CNRS uh, as a permanent researcher in ETIS laboratory in the University of Sergi Pontoise in Paris area. This is a joint work with Tobias Oestering from KTH Stockholm. And we are working uh, on this uh, topic at the interplay between information theory and the problem of decentralized control. And more specifically, we will use the tools from information theory uh, called empirical coordination that were introduced by Paul Kuff. Um, and they are based on a previous paper uh, from Gosner Hernandez Neyman uh, in Econometrica um, 15 years ago. So we are transferring these tools originally from game theory to in information theory by Polkov, and we are using these tools, um, information theory tools, to tackle the problem of Witzenhausen counter example, assuming the um, problem is vector valued. So, yes, okay. So the original formulation of this Witzenhausen counterexample, um, I think for this audience is not <laughs> uh, the, the more, uh, we don't need to spend more time on this slide. Uh, there is a state X0 um, Gaussian distributed and the first controller observe the state, select an action U1, this action together with the state creates an interim state X1. So we will refer to this X1 as interim state. Later, uh, this, uh, this state interim is um, observed by the second controller through a noisy Gaussian uh, additive channel. The second controller generates an action U2. The, the goal of this action U2 is to estimate the interim state. And there are two cost functions for this problem. And the original formulation by Witzenhausen, the, the, cost, the unique cost function has two parts, where there is this k, k parameter um, that uh, the trade-off between the cost in green and the cost in red. The cost in green is an action cost at the first controller. The, the cost in red is an, an estimation cost at the second controller. Um, obviously, the optimal action for the second controller is, is known. It's uh, the conditional expectation. The question is what the optimal control for the first controller, such that we minimize um, in, the, in, in both cases, we minimize both uh, cost functions. So we can think of two extreme points, two extreme uh, scenario, uh, strategy for the first controller. In one extreme scenario, the first controller would select U1 equal minus X0, so as to cancel the state so that X1 is always zero. And it's very easy to estimate the state for the second controller. So this estimation cost will be zero, but the action cost will be high, which would be equal to its maximal value actually. So another strategy for the first controller is to uh, select uh, nothing. So U, U1 is constant, and then this cost, action cost is zero. And then here we have the estimation of a Gaussian random variable at the second controller. And this is also the maximum estimation cost. So between these two extreme uh, strategies, um, Bitsenhausen investigated the linear scheme, which, is, uh, which consists in the first controller to um, to have a linear function, U1 is a linear function of X0. And um, by assuming uh, the first controller select the best linear scheme, actually Bitsenhausen shown that um, it is not optimal because very simple two point strategy would have uh, a better performance uh, than this linear scheme. So the question posed by this paper, uh, by Witzenhausen in this paper is, um, what is this optimal control if we know that the optimal control is not linear? 
So what we are, the big picture of what we are looking, what uh, what we are doing in, in this work is that we are assuming a vector valued version of this problem. We are using the tools from information theory that are based on the entropy and the mutual information. But this requires that all the random variables involved are continuous so that they have density functions and it is possible to compute the mutual information and the entropy. And we will see that under this restriction um, of having continuous random variable, we obtain um, uh, that the best uh, strategy for the encoder is again the linear scheme, which is not optimal in general. So our, the conclusion of our talk, uh, I, <laughs> I give you the, the conclusion uh, in the beginning, is that uh, continuous random variable is an active restriction to this problem. Uh, Moir, may I ask a question? Which and how is counter example? Counter example to what? Yes, so, the, so I'm not uh, um, a specialist of the control theory literature. From what I understood, um, it was known before um, that linear control were optimal um, if, the, if the information patent, if mm -hmm. the information of all the controller is the same. Mm -hmm. So the question now is that the two controllers have different uh, information structures. They observe different uh, parts of the random variable involved in the model. And this creates um, a new a distortion, and then the linear strategies are not optimal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, if, I, if I may interrupt. Uh, yes. Uh, so as you said, the counterexample is uh, due to the, the fault theorem. The fault theorem is that whenever you have a linear system, Gaussian uh, noise, and quadratic cost, an optimal estimation and control will always be linear. And this announcement made the point that that is only true when the information structure is what we call uh, classical or, or quasi-classical or partially nested. So in this case, uh, in this example, he shows that when the information structure is non-classical, in which case, for example, in this case, uh, if you think of this figure as a two-stage figure, where the second controller doesn't know what the first controller knew. So if the second controller knew what the first controller knew, then it will be a classical information structure. And in this case, an optimal contro control will be linear. But because here, the second controller, in a way, forgets the memory of the first controller. Therefore, in this case, the information structure is non-classical. So in which case, now, you can think of a situation where you are a decision maker who is losing memory in the next time stage. Mm -hmm. In this case, the, the point that Rishan has shown is that when you have such information structures, in general, non-classical information structures, even if when you have an LQG model, an optimal solution may not be linear. That's why it's called the counterexample. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Yeah. OK. I hope this answers your question. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> OK, good. OK, so, so we are looking, we are investigating this problem of Witzenhausen uh, by using the tools from information theory and especially the tools of empirical coordination. I will present this in the next slide. But before going, uh, yeah, in order to go to this empirical coordination problem, uh, we have some um, so yeah, short review of the literature on this problem. So many papers, many people investigated this, paper, this problem of Witzenhausen um, in the scalar version, but also in the vector version. And Grover Asahai in 2010 investigated a, a vector valued version of the Witzenhausen problem by assuming that the encoder and the decoder are non causal. That is, they both observe sequence of state x0 and a sequence of channel output for the decoder before taking a sequence of decisions, sequ sequence of actions. And they characterize, I mean, they, they provide an achievability scheme uh, for, for this uh, vector value setting. 
And in a paper by Mitra, it was proved that this, um, this achievability scheme, in fact, is optimal. So this problem of uh, Witzenhausen counterexample can be related to uh, some problem, some classical problems in information theory, especially the problem with channel state estimation. And there are several papers on this topic in which the decoder tried to estimate the state parameter of the channel. Uh, and in the same time, the encoder tries to transmit a message to the decoder. So the goal of the decoder, the, the decoder has two objectives, to decode correctly the message transmitted by the encoder, and then to estimate correctly the state of the channel. So in the Witzenhausen problem, the state x0 is considered as a channel state because it impacts the output of the decoder. So later in, in information theory, in the information theory literature, the problem of empirical coordination was investigated by Paul Kef in several papers. And um, it was actually um, a reformulation of a problem by Gosner and Anders Neyman in the game theory literature. And the goal of the empirical coordination in the, empiric, in the coordination problem, the goal is similar as in the Witzenhausen uh, counterexample, because again, the encoder has two objectives. One it is to transfer information to the decoder, and um, another objective is to uh, optimize a certain cost function. And later, this problem was extended to the case of coordination with channel state information or state information uh, at the decoder in several papers. And we started to work on this problem with Tobias several years ago. And in this paper, uh, the conference paper at ITW, we extended the results for empirical coordination to the case of Gaussian state and Gaussian channel. And then, so this was for the achievability result. And then we, um, we, we investigate, we try to obtain a converse result uh, for, for the empirical coordination problem and to connect to the Witzenhausen uh, setting. This is what I will present you today. Uh, so this work is an extension of, of this original work uh, at ITW. So just to, so to, to make uh, some precision on, on the definition. So uh, a pair of random variables is said to be continuous random vector if these conditions uh, are um, satisfied. So these are two, the, the two first conditions are classical in terms of support and CDF. We also assume that there exists a joint probability density function because uh, this assumption is not always, um, uh, is, it depends depending on the, on the scenario, we could have this assumption or not. But we, in this work, we are interested in evaluating the entropy function, the differential entropy of continuous random variable, so that we need uh, this assumption of having a probability density function for continuous random variables. So this is the definition of the differential entropy based on the, uh, the PDF of uh, these random variables. We have the chain rule for the entropy, which is this property that we we'll also uh, um, use in the, in the following. And one important remark is that normal distribution maximizes the differential entropy of a given variance. Okay, so this fact also is very important. And implicitly, it requires that the uh, continuous, the random variable involved are continuous because we need to have a PDF in order to compute the differential entropy. Okay, so now let's go to the system model. So we assume that we consider a vector valued version of the Witzenhausen counterexample. And um, since Grover and Sahai investigated the case where the encoder and the decoder are non-causal, they observe sequence of symbol 
and return sequence, sequences of symbol. Here we assume somehow an intermediate, intermediate case. It's not a scalar version. It's not uh, the, the version of Groover as a high. So we assume that the encoder is non-causal and the decoder is causal. Okay, that is more, more specifically, we consider two controllers. The first controller is here and it observes a sequence N of N uh, IID states X zero that are drawn according to this Gaussian distribution with the variance Q. And the decoder is causal, that is uh, at each instant T, it observes the sequence of past channel output up to stage T, and it must return a symbol at stage T, U2, which is uh, the, uh, based on what uh, we will evaluate the estimation cost of the decoder. I hope this definition for non-causal encoder and causal decoder is fine to you. Uh, the, the rest of the model is very similar to uh, the Witzenhausen. Here, the interim state sequence X1N is uh, obtained by using this equation. Though at uh, each instant, it is the sum of the of U1T and X0T. And the same for the channel output, which is the sum of the interim state plus a Gaussian node of variance N. So of course, uh, the parameters Q and N must be positive, strictly positive. Then a control design is, uh, is, a, um, is defined by F and the sequence uh, JT, where JT is uh, a function. So it's a sequence of function. And this generates a sequence of distribution over all uh, over uh, x0n, u1n, x1n, all the random variables involved in the model are uh, uh, drawn according to this distribution that depends on the state, the IID state, the IID channel, the encoding function, and the causal decoding function that is here. More specifically, in this scenario, we restrict our attention to the control designs that induce continuous random vectors. Okay, so we will assume it's a restriction, it's an active restriction, as we will see, that all the random variable involved are continuous. Feel free to interrupt me anytime if you have questions. Okay, so the, the cost functions so, so, as- so, can, yes. can I, so, so you, you are noise is IIT, right? Yes, okay. exactly. This is uh, this can be seen here at the, the notation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The noise is I, yes. Am I just so that uh, I can follow the setup and the motivation? So in Wissenhausen, we had a one shot problem, n was equal to one, right? Yeah. And in your case, the encoder is non causal, but the decoder is uh, causal. Yeah. And your motivation is to obtain an uh, analytical uh, lower bound for the original problem? It's a good question, actually, yes. Um, generally, what we can do uh, with n equal to one can be done uh, with n uh, arbitrary. And, and the goal here is to uh, provide an outer bound and this is what we will have, assuming uh, this assumption of continuous random vector. And then uh, it, um, it, it induce also an outer bound for the Witzenhausen counterexample in the scalar version, yes. Uh, uh, can, can I also ask a question on this? Yes. So uh, in, in, in information theory, if you do it memoryless channels, yeah. Okay, you have an operational definition, and then you you can show that block a block transmission uh, collapses to a single letter expression for capacity, mm -hmm. right? But it doesn't mean uh, uh, you can achieve the capacity 
yes. single letter transmission, right? Yes. So, uh, usually uh, uh, the code scheme, if you use a code scheme, it gives you a lower bound of capacity. So yes. basically you, 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 you connect to this idea, yeah? Well, is that um, the, the, the coding results in information theory have usually have two parts. There is an achievability part and a converse part. So what you are referring to is referred to the, as the achievability part in which uh, we build a coding scheme that have performance very close to uh, epsilon close to the, the optimal. And, uh, and yeah, that's the goal of the achievability scheme. But then there is also another part, which is uh, assume, which is based on the hypothesis of the problem. For example, the fact that the, the channel uh, is IID, the fact that the state is IID, the fact that the encoder is non-causal, the decoder is causal, etc. By combining all these assumptions together and evaluating the entropies of uh, that uh, on the, the mutual information and the entropy properties that correspond to these assumptions, then uh, we obtain the same formula, and this whole this yeah this corresponds to the outer bound of uh, of a coding resume. And in this case, uh, we don't have. Uh, we don't have epsilon optimality. It's a, a strict optimality. So if I can reformulate what I say. So the, in the converse result, we assume uh, usually the converse result holds for any uh, N. And they are, they are valid also for uh, epsilon equal to zero. I mean, they are exactly optimal. I don't know if I answered no, no, that's perfect, perfect. your question there. Okay. Perfect. So one part of the result I will present to you actually is based on the converse argument in order to show uh, the, 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 our solution for, for under this assumption. Yes. Okay. So now let's keep, keep in mind that uh, a control design is uh, a tuple of functions like this and it induces a distribution like this, based on what we will evaluate the end stage cost, uh, like this, by using these two functions. Um, so the first, the first cost is the action cost of the first controller. So it is the average over the stages and the expectation over the strategies and over the IID state. The, the expectation refer to the distribution in the previous slide. So this is the action cost of the first controller, and this corresponds to the estimation cost at the second controller. Again, by taking the expectation with respect to the distribution, the probability distribution of the previous slide and average over the stages. And we say that a pair P and S of parameter is achievable if there exists a sequence of control designs for which the end stage cost converge to both value P and S. Okay, so instead of plus here, we could have taken the maximum because we have positive, uh, positive value. So we, we would like that uh, for any epsilon small here, we can find a um, a length, a block length n sufficiently large, and a coding scheme, a control design, such that this um, the, the 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 cost of the control design are close to the parameter PNS. Okay, and this is the previous result uh, we had with Tobias at the ITW conference. So. It's uh, an information theory uh, result saying that a pair PS is achievable if and only if there exist two auxiliary random variables, uh, continuous random variables, 
such that together with the other random variables involved in the model, we have a continuous random vector. And moreover, they satisfy a very specific decomposition in terms of uh, the distribution. So the marginal on the state is the one given by it's, it's the Gaussian distribution. Then we have um, the, the, the channel input, the action of the first controller U1 that is correlated to the state X0 and to these two auxiliary random variables. Then U1 is passed through the noisy channel where actually X1 is X0 plus uh, Y1, whereas Y1 is obtained by uh, X1 plus a Gaussian noise. And then in the end, we have the, this, the conditional distribution of the decoder action, the second controller action, that depends on the channel output W1 and this auxiliary random variable W2. So here we can see on this distribution that W2 is a kind of message, uh, a quantization message uh, that the, the encoder will uh, draw based on the state of the system. And the encoder will um, transfer this message to the decoder, to the second controller that will, design, that will uh, return uh, an action U2 based on this message W2 and the channel output Y1. This is possible um, under an entropy assumption. Uh, if this mutual information is smaller than this difference of mutual informations. Is everyone um, um, okay with the definition of mutual information? So the mutual information is a measure of uh, correlation between random variables. And actually it's the expectation of the logarithm of the joint distribution divided by the product of the marginals. Okay. So if this, quant this information constraint is satisfied, then um, um, it, intuitively it means that the state X0 will be quantized according to this random variable W2. And then this, the information corresponding to this quantization will be passed through a state dependent noisy channel where the, uh, the, the auxiliary random variable W1 plays the role of uh, channel input and the decoder observe the channel output Y1 whereas the state of the channel is X0. For those who know uh, some uh, of the results in information theory for channel with state information at the encoder, this corresponds to the Gelfand-Pinsker formula uh, for which the encoder knows the state of the channel X0 and the decoder only have the channel output Y1, okay? Okay, so there is an interpretation in terms of information theory of this inequality, but what is also important is that the marginal of this distribution must satisfy this equality here. That's uh, the, act, the expected, uh, the expectation, uh, the, the expected cost is actually equal to the parameter P and the expected estimation cost is equal to S. Okay, so we have a characterization of the, of the problem in terms of auxiliary uh, continuous random variable. An important remark here is that if we have this uh, information constraint, we should be able to compute what's the entropy and what's the mutual information of the random variable involved in the model. So another remark is that um, uh, this distribution this has a very specific decomposition that can be represented as Markov chain that are here, uh, meaning that the channel output Y1 and the interim state only depend on X0U1 
and, 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 and not on W1, W2. That's, it's a conditional independent of this pair and this pair given the, uh, the pair that is in the middle. And the same for this Markov chain here. The um, decision of the second controller U2 only depend on the channel output and the quantization W2, not on the other parameters. So the ITW paper was based on, uh, the, the main contribution of this paper was the achievability proof of this uh, result, which is based on a block Markov coordination coding. And I will just uh, give a sketch of the converse proof. It's uh, Mark, 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 before you go to proof. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if the second controller were also non-causal, yes. Uh, so what uh, what will the result? Be? This is a result of uh, Chaudhry and Mitra. Uh, yeah. Is that true? That yes. In that, yes. In that case, what would be the main difference? And also, second question is: Do you also have a, a a cardinality type bound on the of the variables. Yes, and uh, it's not only the cardinality, also the information constraint is different. Um, basically, what happened in in their scenario is that um, one one way of understanding what happened is that we remove this um, mark of chain in blue, meaning that the second controller U two observe also W1, and, and actually W1, W2 can be merged into one, um, one auxiliary random variable. You don't need two auxiliary random variables. You have only one. And here the information constraints is different. You have, um, you have zero smaller than W, which is the, the, the auxiliary, the unique auxiliary random variable. You have Y1, and here you have nothing. Here you have this W, and you have X0 here. And here, again, you have nothing. And Mal, do, do we, uh, in that case, uh, can we still rule out the optimality of Gaussian uh, codebooks for the non-causal case? Um, Um, so the optimality of the Gaussian code book. Um, this is why this is what the what Mitra um, uh, said, I think, in the in the result when the optimality was uh, proved by Mitra. I think it's uh, it's uh, exactly uh, saying what you say. Can I also ask something? Yes. Uh, uh, for the inequality too. Yes. If if we make W two to have uh, zero information, so we have an inequality that says uh, zero is less or equal to the right side. Correct. Yes. But. Uh, am I missing something here? But then uh, it would say that the mutual information from W1 to X0 is less than or equal from W1 to Y1. Yes, exactly, yes. Uh, I mean, isn't the only time this can happen? Uh, uh, the the if, the, the if, main it's if uh, because I'm trying to understand this from the data processing. Yeah. Surely Y one has less information than X zero. Is it, does it have? Uh, I, I'm trying to understand this. If W two is 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 generate the the trivial information that will say uh, mutual information W one to X zero is less than or equal to the information from W1 to Y1. Um, 
The important part is that um, the decoder would be able to decode W1, um, which is not the case here because of the causal assumption of the decoder. Here, if we give uh, the, the, the decoder U1, uh, if we give to the decoder W1 as well, it gives much more information to the decoder and uh, the, yeah, the second controller can better estimate uh, the interim state. No, no, I, I'm, I'm just trying to see whether this inequality, it, it would actually be, uh, because it, 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 if you assume W2 has null information, then the neutral information, I'm inclined to suggest the neutral yeah. information from W1 to X0, is greater or equal from W1 to Y1, no, not the other way around. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, mm. You see my point? This is my... Um, it's okay, just go, go on. I, I would resolve it by the end. So, so hopefully, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's... it's um... Yeah, yeah, I think the, the, the question is um, how much information uh, it is possible to, to give to the second controller. And here actually, compared to the, the, the scenario with non-causal encoder and decoder, we can give only W2 and not W1 to the second controller. And if the second controller would be also non-causal, then we would be able to give W1 also to the second controller so that he could better estimate U2. And then in terms of information constraint, then um, um, probably by choosing W2 uh, constant, then we will recover uh, the, the same information constraint as, so that it would significate that W1 is actually the quantization of the state that is also transferred to the, the decoder and that is tuned in order to, um, uh, to transfer more information through the channel. Perhaps it's, it's important to have in mind that this is, um, sorry that I interrupt, but, yes, please, yeah. um, but I think one needs to understand condition two as something that needs to be satisfied. So this is a statement which says if and only if, so we can, actually uh, achieve this uh, if this condition is satisfied. So if you pick W in a way that this condition is not satisfied, then this choice of random variable is not uh, giving you an achievable scheme. Oh, 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 okay, that would answer my question then. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So you cannot choose W2 to, to, be, to generate null information, basically. Is that what you're saying? It, it yeah. could be that it's then not, if then the condition is not satisfied, then the, the, this, then you cannot uh, achieve P and S. So okay. Then, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Tobias. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So yes, there is an existence, uh, and uh, yeah. Okay. So I, I just I, I just want to show the converse proof because it's very simple, and I think it's interesting to see how all the hypotheses in the model are combined together in order to give exactly the, uh, converse, ver the converse result here. So just to, to recall, the achievability result tells that under this hypothesis, if we, uh, if we find, assume that we can find such auxiliary random variable, then it is possible to construct a, co a control design, a sequence of control design that achieve these pairs of uh, of course. Now for the converse result, we start from the beginning. We assume that there exists a sequence of control design that achieve this pair of parameters P and S. And we will see that there might exist auxiliary random variable that satisfy all these uh, conditions. Okay. Okay, so start, we start from yeah, from the hypothesis. So assume that we have a, a sequence, we have those, these sequences of continuous random variables and they achieve the pair of parameter P and S. Um, then we have some 
um, standard uh, properties of mutual information and entropy. The first equality here is called Schizer-Sum's identity. It tells uh, that the sequence of random variable can be decomposed in certain part so that the mutual information given uh, the past uh, of the channel output is equal to this mutual information given the future of the state uh, sequence. Then there is um, a classical tool also of, uh, based on the introduction of uniform random variable T over the indices the, uh, the, of the stages. And we are able to refer uh, to reformulate the first equation in terms of this uh, uniform random variable T that uh, it will impact, uh, that will replace small t that is here. So later, the third equation, the third equality comes from the IID property of the state. So here, the conditioning here is actually independent of this part of the mutual information. So we can move this, uh, what's in the conditioning into the mutual information here. And here, the last stage is to identify the auxiliary random variable. So we decide that the W1, we, 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 we need to show that there exists a W1 and W2. So we take this W1 to be exactly this random variable, the sequence of state X0 from stage capital T plus one up to stage N, where capital T is a uniform random variable. And W2 is the sequence of channel output from stage one to stage T minus one. And there is also uh, the, 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 the uniform random variable T. And we can see here, if you replace, you have this term here, you replace by W2. You have this term here, you replace by W1. You do the same here and here. You have the first expression. It remains to identify the single letter auxiliary random variable x0, y, uh, u1, x1, y1, u2. And we decide to select, to choose as follows. Um, importantly, uh, this choice of auxiliary random variable satisfy the Markov chains that are here, that are the Markov chain of the condition one in the theorem. It corresponds to this decomposition of the distribution. Okay. And by hypothesis, uh, the, cost, uh, satis the, the cost achieve the parameter P and S, but as you can see here, we could also reformulate the cost in terms of those auxiliary random variable by considering this uniform random variable T, capital T here. So we have the average over the stages. And this is the identification, the finite identification of the auxiliary random variable. And doing the same for the estimation cost, we end up with uh, these formulas. So here we use um, nothing but the usual uh, tools from information theory to show that this information constraints must be satisfied. But again, what's important is that we need to be able to evaluate this entropy and the mutual information that are that corresponds to these random variables. Do you have some questions? So now, uh, since we have um, a single letter formulation of the vector valued version with non-causal encoder, causal decoder, we can work on the single letter solution of the problem. And we, the goal is to find the optimal uh, dis probability distribution for the solution that is here in this problem. Okay. So you can, if I can reformulate, um, so we have this theorem says that the block problem uh, here has a solution that involves only single letter random variables. So now the question is, 
what if we optimize uh, on this solution here in order to find the, the optimal distribution for this vector value um, Wittsenhausen problem. And this is what we are doing here in this slide. We introduce this um, cost optimization problem for parameter P. The question is to minimize the estimation cost given the action cost of the first controller over a set of probability distribution that is denoted QCP, where QCP is uh, the distributions uh, that are the free distribution from the previous theorem, the part that is not fixed uh, by the, sta the statistics of the source and the channel. And this distribution must satisfy that the action cost is exactly equal to P. The information constraints must be satisfied. And moreover, all the random variable must be continuous. Okay, so now from now, we will work on this uh, cost optimization problem. And, um, and yes, so one important thing is that we recall the best linear scheme of uh, the paper by Wittsenhausen, which is uh, here. And if the parameter P uh, that corresponds to the action cost is smaller than the variance of the state, then um, it's optimal to select this uh, linear strategy, which is, um, uh, for example, if P is equal to Q, then U1 is equal to minus X0 and the interim state X1, which is the sum of both uh, random variables, would be always equal to zero. And then the estimation cost also would be equal to zero. Okay, so we have this best uh, linear scheme and the estimation cost is given by this formula. If P is smaller than Q, then we have this estimation cost uh, the correspond that corresponds to uh, um, having a Gaussian random variable observed uh, through uh, a Gaussian channel. Okay. So our main result is the following. Given the parameters Q and N from the beginning, the optimal cost with continuous random variable um, is given by this equation where we have conditions on P and Q, the parameters Q uh, and, and the parameter Q and N of the problem, and the parameter P, uh, the action cost of the first controller, um, especially we have this interval P1, P2, P1 is always smaller than P2. And um, if this condition is satisfied, then the optimal estimation cost is given by uh, this uh, straight line is a straight line. And otherwise, it corresponds to the best linear scheme um, of the previous slide. So graphically, uh, we have here the, 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 the blue curve here corresponds to the estimation cost induced by the, the best linear scheme. And the brown, the, the brown uh, line here between P1 and P2, sorry, the, so here this is P1, the, the black dot here, and this is P2. And between those two points, uh, we have the straight line that is here. So this optimal solution to this problem is, um, is uh, given by the, the blue curve until this point, here the, br the, the brown curve here, until P1. And again, in the small interval between zero and P1, it is the blue curve corresponding to the uh, linear scheme. Man, uh, I have some uh, questions. Can you get to the uh, previous uh, slide, please? So in this case, as you see, the optimization problem looks to be very complicated, like infinite dimensionals. Yeah. And uh, you have these auxiliary random variables. They look to be arbitrary. Uh, so how? Uh, do you use a numerical method to 
plot the solutions or were able to analytically solve the problem? So it's an ana ana analytical result. The, the main theorem is to show this equality here. And we obtain this analytically. I can show you the sketch of the proof for, for proving this equality. But then you can see here, this is uh, very easy to, to plot. I, I, I don't uh, use uh, sophisticated numerical methods to show this. So uh, wh which uh, lemma are, are you referring to the Witzehausen paper? This, um, the, the, so in the Witzehausen paper, it's the, the section on the best linear scheme. Oh, okay, so so uh, you you do you reproduce his best linear scheme yes. or yes. so you 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 restricted if I were to understand you restricted the 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 strategies to be linear and then you computed this is that my understanding. Um, yes, exactly, exactly. That's exactly what is, uh, so if we would have restricted the strategies to be linear in the scalar version of the problem, then the best linear scheme would be this one. Which is the one that given by Witzehausen? Yes, exactly, yes. Yes. Okay. And the corresponding estimation cost would be this one. Okay, so this is like the solution that he can't use the comma filtering. <clears throat> I mean, when, when he restricted to the best linear, then he used the definition of, he used mis square estimation yes. and comma yes, yes. filtering to get, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, one stage comma filtering, I mean, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And so the, the, the estimation cost uh, induced by this linear scheme is a function like this. And yeah, and, and what we obtain uh, from this uh, equation is that um, at the optimum, we should have, we should consider a time-sharing version or a convex combination of the linear scheme uh, for specific parameters P1 and P2. That are given here. So uh, an, an, in, an interesting remark here is that the optimal strategy is memoryless here. So even if we started from uh, a, a problem, a vector valued version of the Witzenhausen problem with non-causal encoder and causal decoder, actually we end up with a solution that can be implemented by using a memoryless strategy And since we have the equality here, we have the converse result, which says that um, this is also optimal for the Witzenhausen counter example in the scalar version. But again, just to, to avoid the confusion, but you mean optimal respect to linear strategies. Is that my understanding? I mean, optimal with respect to the assumption we consider in the very beginning of continuous random variables. So, oh, I, okay. I, yeah. So, we assume from the beginning we, we would. Um, Actually, we, we would, um, the, the idea was to, um, to investigate this problem by using uh, the tools from uh, information theory. So, which are the entropy, the mutual information, 
And uh, one important hypothesis to be able to compute the entropy and the mutual information is to have continuous random variable. And here in this problem, we end up that assuming the random variable are continuous, we end up with the optimal solution uh, is like this, which corresponds to a convex combination of the linear scheme. Okay. So one important thing is that um, what about the Witzenhausen two-point strategy, which was the counterexample of the, the, the of the Witzenhausen paper? So the, the two-point strategy is is very simple because the, the first controller um, select an action U1, which is given like this, depending, depending on the sign of the state X0, and depending also on some parameter A, which corresponds to um, the, 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 the situation of the information, the, where the information is on the real line. So by considering this, strategy at the first controller, it induced an interim state parameter x1, which is the sum of u1 plus x0. So we, it remains only uh, the, 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 the sign of x0 times a, a free parameter a that can be taken arbitrarily large or small, positive. So it means that the, the strategy of the first controller uh, induced an interim state that is not a continuous random variable. Because here we have a discrete random variable, x1. x1 can take two values, either plus a or minus a. And depending on this parameter a, uh, we have the, the, the uh, action cost function, pt uh, of a, and the estimation cost function, uh, the T stands for uh, the two-point strategy here and here. And just by numerical simulation, uh, we can see that uh, when parameter A varies in this interval, we have uh, the pair of, the, we have this parametric curve corresponding to these two equations. And we can see here that there is a range of parameters A that, um, that provide a lower cost uh, for action cost and estimation cost. So we have, um, this example shows that the optimal solution uh, we provided under assuming the random variable were continuous is actually not optimal in general because again, the Witzenhausen two-point strategy outperform any continuous um, any strategy based on continuous estimation. Um, can, can, can I yes. uh, make a comment on this? I, 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 I think um, Witzehaus's counter example, which is basically the one that you, you are referring to here, this nonlinear strategy, I, I think in his paper, he showed that this does better than linear, not overall parameters of the problem, over a very specific uh, yeah. values of parameters. Uh, uh, and actually yeah. this can be verified by simulations that yeah. if you use this, this nonlinear strategy and you choose a different set of parameters of the problem, uh, linear strategies would be optimal. Oh, oh so, sorry, I will not say optimal. Linear mm -hmm. strategies would do better than this non-linear. Yes, so, yes. So I think that's what you mean, right? Yeah. yeah there, so here it's a very specific choice of parameters, uh, as you mentioned, because we, we took these values. Yes, yes. We, with the three values, the, the, yeah, the parameters are here. These are the data of the problem. I mean, Q and N. 
A is the free parameter of the two points strategy. And um, um, there are, I confirm by the, just by, um, by tuning the parameters, uh, it's possible to find other parameters for which the best linear scheme outperform the two point strategy. Yes, it is possible. But still, it does not significate that uh, the linear schemes is, op is optimal for, for this range of parameters as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, but also, that no C does not tell you that nonlinear strategies, uh, any nonlinear strategy is yeah. optimal for all values of parameters. It's also uh, this, this information, according to my understanding, is still lacking. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So, from, from, from what I understand, there are linear strategies. They are not optimal. Uh, strategy based on continuous random variable. They are again not optimal. This is the purpose of this is the main uh, me message of our work. Um, sometimes uh, two point strategy outperform um, continuous the strategy based on continuous random variable, and also the strategy the best linear scheme. But the question is the question remains open. The insight uh, here is that if, um, if we would like to optimize or to, to understand what's the optimal control, uh, what's the optimal uh, strategy for the first controller, we need to go um, beyond continuous random variables. Yeah. So now if, if I can, um, provide, um, I don't know how much time do I have? Um, well, we don't have a limitation, so. Okay. Just go on. So uh, I realized it's, uh, it's uh, one hour and I'm speaking. So just go, I, I would like to show quickly some, the main ideas of the proof of this result. And, and I think it's, uh, it's, it will be time to conclude. The main idea of this proof is to use a Gini aided outer bound, uh, which is based on this information theoretic inequalities uh, that helps to uh, remove the auxiliary random variable W1. So one of both auxiliary random variable will be removed in, in this, uh, in this uh, for, for this converse proof, okay? So now the question is to um, minimize, the original question was to minimize here uh, over a pair of auxiliary random variable, but here we reformulate this problem by considering only one auxiliary random variable, W2, that lives uh, in this set Q1, which is defined here, so we have this information constraint, which is a relaxation of um, the previous minimization problem. So later, um, the optimal distribution at the second controller is, um, by, is, is that is, uh, given by the conditional expectation as uh, usual for this. Pro so the, the problem is to minimize over this set Q1 uh, under uh, the hypothesis of continuous random variable and this information constraint. And then um, another important tool is the, um, this uh, lemma, which says that the optimal distribution for uh, estimating, for minimizing this uh, cost is the Gaussian distribution which has an estimation cost given by this uh, formula, where here we have the conditional entropy of X1 given Y1 and W2. This is referred to as the maximum differential entropy lemma. And from, from this lemma, what's important is that um, consider a distribution Q prime that is optimal 
for the problem in blue here. Okay. Then we have uh, these two inequalities. This one, this inequality, we can reduce the estimation cost by considering Gaussian random variable with the same covariance matrix. And moreover, we have the information constraint here that, uh, that satisfy this with equality. By hypothesis, it is positive. Then we have the equality here. Um, the channel is IID, the state is IID, so that we have this, um, we can evaluate this entropy with respect to the Gaussian version of the distribution Q prime, which is the distribution with the same covariance matrix. And again, here we use the fact that Gaussian distribution maximizes differential entropy. So we are able to show the last uh, inequality, which gives this information constraint. So in this slide, what we are saying is that assuming the, distrib the optimal distribution is continuous, then it's, it must be a Gaussian distribution. And then later, we compute uh, explicitly the, the optimal parameters of the covariance matrix in order to minimize this cost under the fact that this information constraint is positive. So we have um, um, an optimization problem over uh, those, these parameters. And that's our solution here. I don't want to enter into the details, but um, we, yeah, it's, uh, it's um, algebra. And this, uh, by replacing those parameters here into the formulas that are here, we obtain the, the, um, the solution of our main result, which corresponds to the straight line between the parameter P1 and P2. And with the, um, the estimation of the best linear scheme otherwise. So for the inner bound, we have, um, so I, I said that it's an equality. So we have, we have seen the, um, the outer bound, which is uh, saying that we can optimize the parameters and the Gaussian distribution is the best of all the continuous distribution. And on the, other, on the other hand, if we use time sharing between the two linear scheme P1 and P2, then we can achieve any point in the, in the straight line. But we could also uh, take another approach by replacing the parameter, uh, the random variables U1, W1, and W2 by using these linear schemes with these coefficients here. So we have some coefficient that depends on the parameter of the problem. And here we have Gaussian state and Gaussian noise. Uh, no, this is not the Gaussian noise. This is a Gaussian an auxiliary Gaussian distribution. And by replacing this triple of Gaussian random variable into the information constraint, we prove that it is binding. And then we end up with um, the, outer, the inner bound of the, of the main result. Just to conclude this talk, we investigate the vector valued version of the Witzenhausen problem by assuming the decoder is causal, the encoder is non-causal, and assuming that all the random variables involved are continuous. Our result is to show that convex combination of linear uh, memoryless policies is optimal. And then as a consequence, uh, it is optimal also for the scalar version of the Witzenhausen setup restricted to continuous random variable. The two-point strategy outperforms the linear scheme so that we conclude that the continuous, the hypothesis of continuous random variable is an active restriction to the problem. In the next uh, work, the, the, the remaining question is what's the optimal strategy for the first controller. And um, we have in mind that the Lebesgue decomposition theorem mentioned that uh, every probability distribution is a mixture of a discrete part, singular part, and absolute continuous part. Thank you for your attention and feel free to ask uh, if you have questions.